here are the tools and things we need for this project. Of course, we need a yarn, two different colored yarns, one for the DC rows and one for the SC rows. But if you want it to have in solid color, it's up to you, it's okay. And then the corresponding hook, scissor, tapes three needles, and some stitch markers. That's basics. And I already have my foundation chains, um, which corresponds to the measurements that I obtain from the widest part of slip stitch on the first chain to form the ring. Make sure that your chains are not twisted when you close your foundation chains. And then we're going to start our double crochet rows. So chain two. going to do double crochet on the first chain where you slip stitch using the back loop only and then we're going to do double crochet in each of these chains up to the very last chain that we have here. So now I'm at the very last chain of my double crochet row, my first row. So this is our last chain where we're going to put our last double crochet for the first row. And then after, we're going to slip stitch on this chain and this chain. So we have here our two chain as our starting chain and this is the very first chain that is created with our first double crochet. So take note of that and don't be confused. Here, last chain for this, or last double crochet and the last chain for this row. And then we're going to slip stitch here. using your new yarn like so and then we're going to chain one because we're going to start our SC rows and then SC on the same chain where you slip stitch but using the back loop only and you're going to do a single crochet in all of these chains using the back loop only to here. But first, we're going to tie this yarns at the back to secure it. Like this. So now we can start or continue our SC rows. This is 
is going to be our last chain and we're going to have our single crochet and then we're going to slip stitch on this chain the very first chain that is created with our first SC the single crochet there so make sure you're not going to confuse your last chain here because this is going to be our last chain where we're going to put our single crochet our last single crochet still on the back loop and then we're going to slip stitch here and then we're up to our next row our second row for our SE rows we're going to chain one and then SC on the same chain where you slip stitch here but using the back loop only and we're going to do single crochet in all of these chains but using the back loops up to the very last chain this chain for the SC rows we're just going to repeat the process that we have here until you will have a total of four rows of single crochet and then we will be back again with our mixed yarn and our DC stitches because we are going to have an alternating pattern of single crochet and double crochet we're almost done with our last uh, row of single crochet and we're here on the last chain okay we're going to do the last single crochet Bye -bye. and then we're going to slip stitch here this one this chain so this chain is your first starting chain and this chain is the first chain that is formed with your first single crochet so we're going to slip stitch there to obtain that straight end joint. Slip stitch. But this time we're going to change back to our first yarn, which is the mixed colored yarn. So instead of looping this yarn to the hook, we're going to get our yarn, our first yarn here. slip stitch we will loop the yarn with our hook and we and we will do our slip stitch with our new yarn there and then since this is going to be another row of double crochet we will chain two and then double crochet on the same chain where you slip stitch And the rest of the chains here but then again you have to tie or we have to tie I'm sorry our yarn our yarns here to secure it first so there we're going to continue making this double crochet rows of double crochet so we're going to make another set of double crochet or eight rows of double crochet last chain so last double crochet before we will slip stitch and then we will slip stitch here not here not there but on the first chain of the first double crochet at the start of the row we will slip stitch there Two double crochet for the next row. I took chain for the next row. So we will do, we will repeat the same pattern just like we have here until we can create eight rows of double crochet and then another row of 
Cover our brows for single crochet, four rows of single crochet, until we can decide where we want to put our side slit. We will do the side slit part next. For the original skirt that I made, I created four group of rows of double crochet and four group of rows of single crochet before I did the slit part, the side slit. So it's here one, two, three, and four, and it's on the fifth that I had a slit. And also for the single crochet, one, two, three, four, and on the fourth row of this uh, double crochet rows, this is it is where I put my slit. But you can put your slit anywhere on this rows. Just make sure that you are on the double crochet rows, not on the single crochet rows. Here I already crocheted two rows of double crochet, but let's just consider this as we have reached our desired length where we want to put or to have our slit, our side slit. And you will start crocheting in panels now instead of in rounds. We will do the back pa panel first and then the front panel. The back panel is totally different with the front panel because we have an end joint here. But first, we will mark our sides. Here I already put two markers on each of our sides. And we need to position our end joint at the center back. So this is our back panel and this is our front panel. So our end joint should be at the center back or the middle part. And then here. So we will start crocheting here. I will start the back. We will start the back so that we want we don't we don't need to cut this yarn. We'll just continue and then we will do the front panel. To start with the back panel, you're just going to continue this one and then you're going to chain two because we're on the groups of double crochet and then double crochet here and the same chain where you slip stitch. We're going to put um, double crochet in all of these chains at the back loop, still in the back loop, up to the chain where we put our marker. Now I am at the very last chain before the chain where we put our marker. So I'm going to remove our marker this time. And then I will make, we're going to make our very last DC or double crochet. And instead of inserting at the back loop only, I'm going to insert on both of the front and back loop. And then chain one, and we can cut our yarn. Make sure to leave about an inch before you're going to cut the yarn. So, there. so as you can see here, we only crocheted half of our back panel from the center to the side. And now we're going to crochet the other half from the side up to the center. We're doing it this way because we wanted to retain our end joint at the center back. Just wanted to be consistent with our end joint here. That's why we do it this way. So we'll start from here. And then we're going to do double crochet in all of these chains at the back loops only. And then we will do slip stitch here and then proceed with the second row on this other uh, on, on the left half of the back panel. Here I started with the chain where we have our stitch marker on the side. I just remove it. I tie a knot to secure this one and then leave an inch or maybe two inches. We're going to need this tail end later. And then I'm going to do double crochet I mean the two chain two chains and then double crochet on the same chain where you have where we have our first or we retire where we tie our knot at the back loop only then DC and then DC 
see in the next chain and back loop only up to the last chain here I'm at the very last chain before we're going to slip stitch so here we're going to slip stitch this one on this chain to form our end joint at the center there and then chain two and we will proceed with our row two on the left half of the back panel up to this side now to end this row <coughs> This is our final chain. We are going to put our final double crochet for this row. But instead of inserting at the back loop, we're going to insert on both of the front and the back loop of this chain. So here we're going to crochet, insert on both of the back loop and the front loop. We're going to crochet, double crochet. And then leave an inch or two inches for, for the tail. And we will be needing this tail later. Here I leave an inch. The very end, we will be needing this tail end later. And for this right half, we only have the first row here, so we're going to do the second row for the right half. We're going to insert our hook here, the third chain. Just the same, this is the first chain formed with our first double crochet. The two here, the two chains here are our two starting chains. But we were going to use the chains at the very top insert our hook and then get our yarn then we're going to tie a knot just the same leave an inch and then chain two chain two double crochet in the same chain where we tie our knot this is going to be a bit tricky here because we tie a knot on this chain so sometimes it's going to be so small to insert our hook but we can make this Usually, I push my yarn on the lowest part of the chain so that I can insert my hook when I'll be doing my double crochet. See here, we were able to do it. and the same and then back loop only and then next is double crochet in the next chain back loop only and just the same we're going to do double crochet in all these chains here up to the very last chain before our end joint and then we're going to slip stitch here and then chain two and then proceed with our row three for the left half of the back panel so here we were able to retain our end joint at the center so now we have completed our or another row our row two for the panel crochet of this back panel so we need to crochet four more of these rows because we need eight just like 
here where we crocheted in rounds so it's just the same the number of rows for the slit part of our DC rows would just be the same on the upper part of our skirt so we have eight here and so we need to crochet four more rows of double crochet before we're going to change our yarn and our stitch but this just consider this as if we have crocheted eight rows of double crochet already so we're going to change our yarn and our stitch wow the music of our neighbor so now we're going to change our yarn I'm just going to remove this because we need to slip stitch with a new yarn. Okay, I'm going to insert here and then loop through or loop the hook with our new yarn. And then there, just tighten this one. Chain one. Single crochet and the same chain where we slip stitch, just the same, just the same before, and then single crochet and the rest of the chains back loops only. There, up to the very last chain here, our final chain. We're going to do the single crochet with our new yarn. Here we're on our final chain, last chain. Still, instead of inserting through the back loop, we're going to insert both in the front and the back loop. And then chain one, always end with a chain one. And then before you cut uh, your yarn, leave an inch or maybe two inches and then we can snip our yarn and that's it we're done with our first row of single crochet on the left half of our back panel and then we're going to do the single crochet row on our right half of the back panel so just like the DC row, for the SC row, we're just going to tie the new yarn on the third chain from here. And that third chain is actually the first chain that is formed with your first DC. And then so chain one, because this, guy, this is an SC row, chain one and then SC in the same chain. And then SC and the rest of the chains up to the very last. And then slip stitch at the center joint and join. So for my tassel, I use this cardboard as a template for the length of my tassel. So you can wind 10 times or maybe 15 times or more if you wanted to have a more uh, bulky or fluffy tassel. And then you, you just have to cut one side here and then like I already have here and then with your skirt make sure that the right side is facing up and then this is, this is the right side and this is the wrong side and then the right side facing up and then we're going to have our hook maybe a larger hook to accommodate all our yarns you're going to pass your hook down up like this and then at the center of this Thank you.